Hey, 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 yeah, yeah, right there. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, and I like it like that. Dre Day podcast, and it's like my bad. I was coming in with an instrumental. I get some quintessential when I do this off the mental. Yeah, and I got it like that. Man, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you guys like that? Welcome to another episode of the Dre Day Podcast. Ooh, listen to that voice, baby. How could I not have my own podcast with this radio voice? You little succulent bitches. What's up, baby? Live and direct from Queens, New York. I am here on video. The first video podcast. Everyone's fucking bitching about the video, you little fucking bitches. All you guys do is moan and complain. I'll be back when there's video. You guys are a bunch of fucking little YouTube Karens commenting. Who actually in their right mind comments, I'll be back when there's video. Where's the video? And then you hit comment you little fucking whiny little bitches can't just use your imagination god forbid that you gotta use your fucking imagination you guys ever read a book before you do you guys read a book and go where's the movie where's the movie dude i actually do that so (laughs) welcome to another episode of the dre day podcast as you notice i'm using my fucking laptop camera because everyone's fucking whining and complaining i want to see you andre y'all a little sus for that by the way you guys a little sus for that you know that you're like i want to see a grown man move his lips with a big black thing next to his mouth for an hour y'all y'all a little sus for that but i forgive you jesus forgives you that's right so welcome to another episode of the dre day podcast you like that little radio voice how can i not do my own podcast with this radio voice i'll be honest with you this voice does not match my face i know that even as i'm watching myself on camera right now and i'm hearing my fucking butter voice my voice that's like a hot knife through butter baby the dre day podcast i'm even like that doesn't really match but we'll go along with it i um i'm having a good day today it is i don't want to say the day because i don't want you guys doing math on when this was recorded and shit whatever but i'm gonna be in california tomorrow california a we going going back back to cali cali that's right even though i haven't been to cali in like nine years and guess what the reason i'm going is for comedy little thing called comedy that's right Applause, applause, applause. So, I'm going to be going there. But I feel like I owe you guys a lot of explanations. I kind of started my podcast with a bang, with a, with, with a funny episode after funny episode. And I didn't really explain to you guys where my head is at with a lot of this stuff. And I feel like I owe you an explanation with a lot of this. Why I started this podcast, why I left the old podcast, A lot of whys and whys and you guys are so curious, which is so great because curiosity means you guys care. And I really appreciate that because I have all the answers for you in this episode. I'm going to answer all your questions. I've been getting probably almost a thousand messages and comments asking, why did you leave the old podcast? Did you explain why? Hey, Dre, can you tell us why you left the old podcast? Well, I'm going to answer all your questions, okay? Because what the people want, the people get. You wanted video? Well, you got video, even though it's shitty quality. And I was trying to fucking get the bread up for an actual, like, nice camera. But I guess you guys are like, I won't come back unless I get a game. Little bitches, you know that? You actually, you like little Karens topping in, typing in the comments. Where's the camera i won't be back unless there's a camera and then you hit comment what is wrong with you in the words of t to the motherfucking k who raised you who raised these milk motherfuckers who raised you tk i've always thought is like a black seinfeld you know their voice is almost the same but he talks about like hood problems like what's the deal with hood problems you know 
Jerry Seinfeld talks about what's the deal with like little minute problems. Like what's what's the deal with pens? You write it and you're and you're go away. But TK talks about what's the deal with hood problems. Like he'd be like, what's the deal with broke bitches? <laughs> Who raised you? Y'all got some broke pussy. What's the deal with broke pussy? You know. <laughs> Anyways, what I was trying to say is, I got off on a whole tangent right now. You guys probably think I'm on caffeine or something. You're like, wow, Dre's really energetic here. Nah, man. It's just the people get me going, baby. The people get me fucking going. That's right. I'm fucking pumped. It's fucking 10 degrees outside here in New York City. And I'm going to California tomorrow where it's 70 degrees. I can't wait to just wear a fucking tank top. Y'all want to see Dre in a tank top? You got to pay a little extra for that. Speaking of payments, the Patreon page is coming soon. And if you want to donate to the podcast to help us get some better equipment, because I put a lot of money into just the sound equipment, but the video equipment could use a little use a little touch, because everyone's like, you could just use your phone, and uh, we could do that. But I want to bring you top-notch entertainment, buddy. Entertainment, buddy. If I'm going to spend money, I'm going to spend fucking money. So... If you want to donate to the podcast, Cash App is Asian Andre and Venmo is Asian Andre. And I will be using that money to save up for some very good studio equipment. I'm a one man team. I'm a one man army right now. Okay. I spent a lot of money on this audio equipment. You know, I invested in myself and I should have done this years ago, but I was so just satisfied because I was co hosting a popular podcast, you know, and that's a podcast that did me a lot of wonders you know it's the reason you guys are watching this a lot of you guys 90 percent of you guys and i'm so grateful for that you know i'm so grateful for you guys putting on these earbuds and and just listening to me and just and just just yeah whatever you know and we're also on spotify apple itunes it's kind of being a little bitch right now if i'm being honest with you they're being a kind of a little bitch so um I got it approved, and I'm trying to update the episode and put episodes on there, but it kind of being a little, little, little difficult, if I'm being honest with you. It's being a little difficult, and Spotify is really good, you know, and they should be because I have Spotify Premium. You ever get like, <laughs> don't you feel all bougie when you got Spotify Premium? You're like, yeah, I got Spotify. They got pre- you go, they go, you got Premium. They go, what else is there? What 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 uh, what other way is there to go but premium? I'm sorry, you have the basic. No, you listen to ads. Mm. Okay, it's Spotify really wins both ways. They either suffocate you with ads and they make money on the ads, or you fucking tap out and you go, all right, I'll pay the thirteen ninety nine a month. And so they're making money. It's it's kind of a fucked up system. Maybe I should do something like that. Just fucking stranglehold you guys with fucking ads this whole don't you hate when a, when you watch a youtube video and it's like i don't know say it's like whatever how long it is maybe 10 minutes to half an hour maybe even an hour and 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 it's like ads every like two seconds and you're like what the fuck dude i can't even enjoy this and and the only way you can Watch something where it's no ads is if you have YouTube premium. Who is there? Is there anyone actually paying for that? I don't know a single person that has YouTube premium. I don't know a single goddamn person. I skip all the ads whenever it comes on. You know, Louis C.K., if you watch his new special, uh, what's his new special called? Sorry or something? Something like that. He had a funny bit about YouTube ads. He was like, um, you know, it's kind of, he's, I'm going to fucking butcher it, but he's basically saying when I, <laughs> it's fucked up that we all skip the ads because somebody spent a lot of time on this commercial and you're just like, nah, I'm going to skip it. I'm going to skip it. You know, and he's like, somebody trained the Jaguar to like run perfectly alongside a car for like 10 seconds and you're just like, no, nah, I'm going to skip it. I thought that was pretty funny. Anywho. I'm here by myself, man. And everyone's like, I don't know if you can carry the shit by yourself. I don't know if you can do a podcast by yourself. First of all, I wasn't doing it by myself. I had some co-hosts. And they're like, I don't know if you can carry it. I don't know if you can carry it. I don't know if you can carry it. I, what? What is What is there to carry? 
What is there to carry, guys? You just got to fucking muster up some energy and fucking talk, baby. These are thoughts that are going in my head all day, so let's just let it rip. Anyways, now you guys, an explanation. I just kind of started this podcast. Um, I don't want to say on a whim, but I started it, and we just did funny episode after funny episode, and I didn't really explain anything to you guys, you know, and I do owe you that, you know, I don't owe you much, but I do owe you that. So I started this podcast because obviously I left the old podcast, I left the old one, I left it, and everyone's like, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> it's like the it's like Ferris Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Bueller, you guys are like fucking substitute teachers. Like, did you sign in? I didn't see you sign in. I didn't see you sign in. We're taking attendance. Taking attendance. I didn't see you sign in. Well, guess what? I haven't been there in a while. I haven't been there in a while in months. I haven't been there in a very long time. Even though I I was there, but I wasn't there. You know, mentally, I wasn't there. The camera's an interesting thing because everyone at home watching on YouTube said the same exact thing yo dre's just like not there he's just not there and you guys are right you guys saw right through me i was just not there mentally you know and why is that why is that well you know i just kind of felt like there was a lot of topics that i um didn't know anything about you know and uh granted there's probably not a lot of topics i do know a lot about but (laughs) but you know I'm 27 years old, and um, you guys essentially have been watching me grow up through uh, through a camera lens. I think I came onto that show when I was 23, 24, and now I'm 27, and, and you guys have been watching me grow into this very mature spiritual being that is a um, philanthropist and a, and a philosopher and a just made a lot of that up it's not really true but um i don't even know what philanthropist means but uh yeah so i mean it's no one's fault at the end of the day and let me start off by saying there's absolutely no beef there's absolutely no uh, just hate anywhere this is all you know people the fans like stirring shit up you know they like making it a you versus them them versus you this person versus whatever they like that. They like the drama. And I appreciate that because there there is a place in the world for that kind of stuff. But I will say between me and um, my man Godfrey, there is no beef at all. Have we talked in a while? No, we haven't talked in a while. But I will get to that. I still love the man. The man has done a lot for me. You cannot contest that at the end of the day. But um, listen, I was on the podcast for three years. Three years is a long time. I did almost 300 episodes. Uh, There were times where, you know, we recorded like seven, eight episodes in a day because he was going to be in L.A. for a month. And I I put in a lot of a lot of time and a lot of work into the podcast. And the podcast has done me wonders. You know, um, I gained a lot of new fans, a lot of hardcore fans. The thing about podcast fans is that they feel like they know you. And and I know a lot about podcasts in what makes a good episode, what is interesting. Sometimes I'll record an episode of Dre Day and I'll just I just won't release it because I'm like, that wasn't interesting. I know what good podcasting is. The thing about recording stuff that I think the number one mistake that people make today with any type of content, whether it's you you know, Instagram sketches or whatever, right? Is People release every goddamn thing they record. And let me tell you something. You don't have to release every goddamn thing you record, okay? Fun fact coming at you. The Thriller album, the highest selling album of all time, even to this day, which was produced by Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson's Thriller album, they recorded over eight hundred songs in a span of three to four months for that album how many songs were picked for that album off the top of my head i think it's 10 to 12 think about that they recorded around 800 songs in three to four months 
and they chose 12. Think about that. That is the same philosophy that I use with anything that I record, any video that I record, whether it's a rant, a stand-up clip with captions, which I work very hard on, so you should check out and share anytime I release those, because they take a lot of time. It take you gotta sync it all up, and the crowd's gotta be right. You gotta. I, but anytime that happens, now anytime someone records something, you don't have to release everything you record, man. Okay, that's my philosophy. So. Why I was saying that, I have no fucking idea. But, listen, the old podcast, it did me a lot of great wonders. And um, I, I, I learned so much from being on that podcast, you know. I learned so much. I learned how to be the straight man. I learned how to, um, I learned how to, to carry a conversation. I learned how to keep a conversation going. I learned how to transition natural conversations. I learned how to interview guests i learned how to ask them the right questions get some information out of them i always felt like i'd be a great interviewer because i i generally am interested in people's in people's journey and their lives and how they got to be where they are today i i, I am very interested in that and the old podcast did me wonders let's not let's not let's not sugarcoat it i i had a great time you know there were some great times in there a lot of great times in there I did almost 300 episodes, and people are asking me why I left. Well, listen, at the end of the day, daddy's got to leave the nest. Daddy's got to, daddy's got to go on and do his own thing. And 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 I am I calling myself daddy too much right now? Maybe, but that's not really the point. I have to go on and do my own thing. I don't want to be one of these guys, and I'm not going to say any names. But I want to. I don't want to be one of these guys where. You know, as my career progresses, as 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 I get older in the game, as I mature in the game, as I get stronger in the game, I don't want to be one of these guys where I show up somewhere and somebody asks me about somebody that I'm affiliated to every time I go somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I don't want my name attached to somebody that um, has been doing it longer than me and, and, and you know, is bigger than me or has com- accomplished more. You know what I mean? I don't... I don't want that to be the case right now or ever, you know, so, um, you know, decisions had to be made and, and, you know, Patrice called them the, the golden handcuffs. Uh, they're golden because the opportunities are great and you get some work and you get recognition, blah, 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 but they're handcuffs because, well, they, they pigeonhole you a little bit and they restrict your movements a little bit and, and kind of put you in this, uh, a bubble, let's say, you know, so, listen, at the end of the day, um, Godfrey, he's a, he's, he's, uh, when the history books are written, he's, he's a legend in the comedy game, and he's, honestly, any comedian that you name, that, that, uh, people say is in their top five, I would, I would 100% confidently put him right up there with anybody you name i'm not gonna name any names you guys know all the people that are alive that people consider great i would put him up there with any one of them and see how they would do following him when he's fucking you know what i mean that's a nightmare for anybody any fucking body so i mean with that being said the man casts a big shadow you know he's been doing it almost 30 years i'm in my seventh year so and he deserves all the recognition he gets. This is, again, this is not uh, me versus him. This, that's my fucking dude. That's my big brother. That's my mentor. That's my fucking dude. I love that dude, you know? Um. So, like I said, there's no, there's no any type of dispute with anything like that. There's no malice, anything like that, ever. There's never going to be malice between us, ever. I love that dude. You know, but, um, you know, is it, is it, is it, the, let me tell you something. The interesting thing about doing a podcast with somebody is that your friendship now becomes this whole other thing because essentially you're going into business with somebody. So now a friendship that just becomes this playful thing where, you know, you guys joke around when you guys see each other and you guys do this, do that, maybe go on some dates with some girls together, maybe even fuck some girls in the same old town again. Whatever it is, 
it becomes a different thing when you do a podcast with somebody because like i said you're becoming business partners you're essentially going into business with somebody and there's going to be a lot of uncomfortable conversations like uh the split in pay or how do we divide this up who gets the revenue for that and who is going to do the ad reads and na 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 so it's very hard to i i'd almost rather never um do a podcast with a friend because i value the friendship so much more than 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 the podcast you know i i really do value my friends and and my friendships dearly especially people that i consider genuine people you know so uh you know you learn a lot uh from doing stuff like this the experience is something you cannot buy people so with that being said i mean Let's take it back. Let's go back a couple years. And like I said, this is the only time I will ever talk about this on the Dre Day podcast. So get it in while you can, baby. This is the only episode where I'm referencing the old podcast that I used to be on. But I was hesitant in in even making this. But everybody was like, I literally got probably over a thousand messages and comments overall, accumulatively and and. It's just just to the point now where I'm like, let me just let me just address it, get it out of the way, give the people what they want, because I would imagine for you it would be weird if your favorite podcast or one of your favorite podcasts, um, there's there's two co-hosts, a host and a co-host, and we've been doing it for three years, and and one of us leaves, and there's just zero explanation. So I'm sure you guys are like, what the fuck is happening? Can somebody fucking say something? So here it is, out in the open, okay. Well, let's let's start back a little bit. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Um, how about to my first episode, episode twenty-four? Huh? I think it was called Asian Andre or something. Great episode. Okay, I was hanging out with uh, Godfrey, and I think I was I think I was under three years into the game at this point, or something like that. I don't know the exact fucking timetable. What am I a fucking woman in a relationship hey you know it's been three years and two months and nine days and 20 hours and 15 minutes and two seconds i'm not like that i don't know so i was hanging out with him and um he asked me to be on his podcast and i think it was at levity live in west nyack new york uh it's a, that's a comedy club and uh i think he was seeing me do well and then you know, he asked me if I wanted to be on his podcast, and then I went on, and I think we did it on Sunday, that episode, in, like, the daytime, and I was a little nervous, not gonna lie, I was a little nervous, you know, I'm probably around three years into the game at that point, and, and, um, you know, Godfrey, who, who obviously was, you know, still a legend back then, you know, I mean, it was only three years ago, that's not really a lot of time, but still a prominent figure in the game, and, you know, I always call him the the Derek Jeter of the of the uh, New York comedy scene. So, I'm 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 nervous, you know. So I what do I do? I drink a couple of Tall Boys, a couple Heineken Michel Ultra Michela Ultra Tall Boys from a bodega. Start chugging it, right? Because I'm a little nervous. So, so 23 year old me is fucking trying to get some liquid courage to open myself up a little bit. And I go on the podcast, and it was a great episode. It was a great episode. Probably one of the loosest I've ever been on that podcast. Yeah? Yeah? Would you say so? Would you say so? The 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 the, the true hardcore fans, would you say it was it was it was one of my best ones, yeah? So you know, I told the story about us fucking girls in the same hotel room or whatever, and uh you know, that was a real bonding experience. So you know, a couple weeks goes by and he asked me to come on again and then you know, after the episode, he's like, that was great, shit, maybe you should be a regular, and I was like, damn, bro, yeah, um, you don't gotta tell me twice, shit, yeah, I'll be here, and, um, I was there every week since then, um, for the most part, so, and what a, what a journey it was, There's some magical episodes in there, you know, a lot of funny content in there, just us going back and forth, we, we really do have some great chemistry, you know, even to this day, um, and that was undeniable. A lot of fans saw that. Yeah, looking back, I guess, I guess it was an interesting dichotomy of of personalities. A young, twenty three, twenty four year old kid that's you know, in his younger twenties, early twenties, 
meshing with with a with a veteran of the comedy game like himself and you know he's very energetic and i'm a, I'm a laid-back guy so it's kind of like a yin and a yang you know what i'm saying it's a very interesting chemistry so you know there were some great episodes the the steve harvey clip obviously um put us on the map that went viral i even got recognized in the streets uh, a couple times even the sushi restaurant that i frequent here in queens uh you know, the waitress recognized me from that. She was like, wait, was that you in that video? The Steve Harvey video that my boyfriend just showed me the other day? I was like, yeah, that was me. She's like, holy fucking shit. I think I was wearing the same sweater, too. And uh, I remember I called him, too. I was like, yo, dude, I just got recognized. And he's like, bro, that's sick. You know, so there's a lot of cool memories with that. Um, uh, the handle your candle story. Right, that was classic. Looking back, sometimes I look back on that video, the Handler Candle story, and I'm like, wow, I was like really young and dumb and just really clueless. Uh, I mean, that situation would not happen today, but that's all experience. I mean, I was a, I was a, I was a 24, 25, 20, probably 24 at the time. Um, you know, so. It's it's interesting. You guys really did see me wa uh, watch me grow up uh, through a camera lens. You know, I'm kind of like fucking, kind of like Macaulay Culkin a little bit. I'm kind of like the Macaulay Culkin of podcast a little bit. You know what I mean? It's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. You think so? No. Okay. Tom Malone was way bigger than me. Okay. That hurt a little bit. That hurt a little bit for me to say out loud, but okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the handle your candle story. There's so many great stories. Uh, I will say, like, it's it, that telling dating stories on that podcast, especially girls I was seeing, it ruined a lot uh, of stuff for me, like, relationship-wise with girls I was dating because, and I totally get it. Imagine listening to a hip podcast or watching hip podcasts. It's like fucking thousands and thousands of views. Ooh, I just got a new subscriber. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, man. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. Anyways, um... Imagine listening to like a hip podcast and then you just see some fucking schmuck like me fucking uh, telling a story about what happened between us that doesn't make them look very good or make me. It just it's it must be a little weird. So I do get I do get that, you know. Um, but my dating stories were classic on there. You know, I don't regret anything that I've said on the podcast. I'm an open book. And guess what? I'm an open book on my podcast, too. Why would that change? We tell the truth around here, guy. Okay? Okay, we tell the fucking truth. Okay. You want to know the truth? It's a fucking situation. It's a dangerous situation, the fucking truth. The fucking go mind. They fucking losing their mind. So, I'm just trying to go through, like, uh, I don't know. Almost This is almost like one of those episodes on TV where they go through uh, <laughs> all, the, all the, the best parts of the show throughout the year. So, that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to muster up. I didn't take any notes or anything, by the way. I'm just going free flow. You know, people are questioning, can you, can you, I don't know if you can do a podcast by yourself. I don't know if you can steer the ship by yourself. Well, guess what, buddy? I'm fucking almost 30 minutes in and I haven't missed a fucking beat and I got no notes. No notes. Hey, hey, no fucking notes. Up and an applause for me. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. So that, um, was really, uh. A good memory. Uh, what else was there? Remember there was that story where I told you about the uh, the Haitian girl that like fucking slap boxed me and then she smacked my fucking ear and my fucking, my ears rung. She rung my ears and I like, I was like, what the? and I, I got a headache from that. That was a funny story. Um, it was, there's a lot of funny stories, man. I mean, it's, it's just, and some people thought I was lying about my dating stories because of how, of how ridiculous they were, but Maybe, maybe you guys don't get out much. Maybe, may, listen, just because you don't get out much and you don't date much or you didn't date much when you were in your 20s like me and you, you live in fucking Alabama, whatever fucking where Wawa is the biggest fucking thing in your little shit town, don't fucking come at me and say he's lying because you live a fucking boring life. I'm kind of guy. I'm kind of guy. Young guy. Yeah, gay. Yeah, yeah, gay. 
Uh, I'm going to be in Cali tomorrow. Can't wait because it's fucking nine degrees in New York right now. Um, anyways, so the podcast did me a lot of good. And, you know, remember the days with Alex and Bobby? Those were great. Uh, remember me and Alex would go back and forth a little bit because we were like stirred up from the quarantine. That, that, that wasn't, um, that wasn't too good. Um, I want to have Alex on this podcast, by the way, soon. Uh, I think that'll be, I think that'll be really good. Um, yeah, the days with Alex and Bobby were good. And once Alex and Bobby left, um, and Harrington left, I, uh, I kind of knew that was my time to maybe start thinking about leaving too, you know, and it sucks because in a way leaving a podcast like that, especially when you've been doing it for so long, it's almost like a breakup, you know what I mean? It it sounds a little sus. It sounds a little sus, I know. It sounds a little sus, guy. You don't think I know that guy? You don't think I just stopped that through? Huh? But it is a little... It's, it's kind of like a breakup. I'm not gonna lie, you know? And um, I love Godfrey, man. I, I always have and I always will. Nothing will ever come between us, ever. I guarantee you that. Um, the man has done so much for me. So, nothing, nothing will ever come between us. And um, you want to get to the juicy part of the story? All right. All right, then. We'll get to the fucking juicy part. You know me. I always fucking give you a little piece of gossip that you can fucking run home about and fucking be like, oh, I can't believe that happened. A little juicy part of gossip. Now, have him and I talked in a while? No. But, um, I, uh, you know. I don't, I don't, how do I say this? Uh, listen, uh, nobody's right and nobody's wrong in this situation. Uh, listen, I wanted to be off the podcast anyways, and I was wrong for not expressing that. You know, it really just comes down to that when when two good friends are doing a podcast together there's going to be a lot of a lot of uncomfortable conversations like i said right so yeah it's one of those things where you don't want to hurt each other's feelings because you care about each other so much so i wanted to be um off the podcast for a while and um i was wrong I can say that I can take accountability for my actions as I get older. I'm um I'm, I'm getting actually like scary good at that at apologizing and taking ownership of my faults and trying to grow as a person. <clears throat> I was wrong for not coming to him and saying, "Hey, I'm I'm just not there mentally anymore and I I brought the show down by just showing up and and not being there mentally. So I was wrong for that. And I do apologize for that, man. Um, if you are listening right now, I apologize for that. I was wrong for that. But, you know, like I said, a lot of this comes down to it's not per. None of this was personal. Nobody was trying to hurt anybody's feelings or anything like that. I think a lot of this just comes down to we just didn't want to hurt each other's feelings. And, and it's people are good friends and. You know, it's just, 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 you do stuff and you just keep escaping the reality because you just don't want to get into that uncomfortable conversation, man. You know, and the way I was let go, this is the juicy part. Everyone, tune in. Turn your speakers up a little louder. This is the juicy part. Um, the way I was let go is uh, Ralph Sutton, the owner of Gas Digital, he called me. And um, he called me a couple times, actually, because I was, I was doing something. But then he never really called me before, so I knew something was up. And um, I uh, he called me and he said, hey, uh, he basically said, uh, hey, um, you know, we uh, looks like we're going our separate ways. So, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. So he was basically saying, I'm not on the podcast anymore. And, uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I really wasn't hurt by it because I wanted to be off anyways. 
I was just a little annoyed that um, I didn't hear it from uh, the man himself, you know, but I was a little annoyed at that and, and it, it bugged me, you know, it really annoyed me, you know, and just because, you know, of all the episodes I did, I was like, man, I, I he could have told me himself, but at the same time, when you want someone to break up with you when you want to go through a breakup you can't pick and choose how somebody does it that's not fair to anybody you know so that is my fault also i recognize that and you know two rights don't make a wrong so i was annoyed at that so i i didn't talk to him for a while and um you know he's been he's been wanting to talk to me about it but i've been avoiding it because i i just wanted to give it some time so i can i can think about this clearly uh with a with a with a straight mind and with an outside perspective you know sometimes you just have to let your emotions pass so you don't make decisions based on emotion because decisions based on emotions are not decisions at all they are instinct okay and instincts do have value but when it comes to stuff like this you want to let some time go by so you can think clearly and not do anything stupid and and be totally mature you know and uh i've always been mature for my age but it but now it's time for me to to dot my eyes and cross my t's and be mature on all fronts not just mature for my age stuff you know and this is all stuff that i'm just thinking of right now um in the moment you know, um, and it's going to be out there in the world forever. And, you know, we haven't talked in a while ever since then. And I would, I would love to talk to him now, you know, uh, I, I, I will very soon. And, uh, I don't know how that conversation is going to go. I mean, I'm not going to be hateful or spiteful or any in any way or flip out that's not me that's not who i am i don't i don't get angry at anything i don't get a i don't let anything get a reaction out of me that's kind of like my philosophy on life some of it anyways but you know i'm gonna talk to him soon we haven't talked in a while and this is just a reality i'm 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 i don't know what you want from me i'm an open book you know, this is the reality of what's happened, and I was wrong, like I said, and it, like I said, it just comes down to, we, it's just, it's just, you know, I was taking it a little personal at first, how it happened, but like I said, you can't pick and choose, and also, I think that maybe Ralph called me instead of him, because he didn't want to have that conversation with me, because he didn't want to hurt my feelings, and I totally get that from his position. I think one of the biggest um, faults that human beings have is the inability to put themselves in other people's shoes and when i put myself in his shoes i totally get that i totally get that i totally get how it happened how it went down you know people put a lot of money into that show the uh, ralph lewis gom ralph sutton uh lewis j gomez the owners of gas digital where the that that podcast that beautiful podcast studio is held they put a lot of money into that studio and i was bringing down the party i was i was i was showing up but i wasn't showing up i was there but i wasn't there you know what i'm saying so they had every right to do what they did and i can't be annoyed at that you know it's it's at the end of the day it's not personal it's business it is goddamn business and this is show business baby show business the entertainment industry this kind of stuff happens all the time man you know, now could I have lied and been like, oh, yeah, I love, I love, you know, it's, it, it, it is almost like a breakup in that way. Or people go, no, I broke up with this, no, I broke up with this, I'm the one that I'm the one that I'm No, man. That, I'm, I'm not a liar. I don't lie about things. Why lie? I don't know how people lie, man. You gotta keep, you gotta like try to separate, separate these two worlds that you created, these two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight worlds you created. You try to make sure they don't collide. That's exhausting. I'm telling the truth here, man. This is what happened. 
And like I said, there's no there's no hard feelings with any of this. I don't have beef with anybody, with anybody on the planet. And this is the reality of the situation. Um, why, you guys have been wondering? And I hope all your questions have been answered. I'm never going to talk about this stuff again on this podcast. So get it in while you can. Listen to it and re-listen to it and re-listen to it. Because it's never going to happen again. You want to be gay? What I fucking mean? It's the last fucking time you're going to hear about this shit. So fucking enjoy it. Fucking enjoy this shit. Take a good fucking look. Because it's never going to fucking happen again. What the fuck? So that is what happened. I'm going to be in California tomorrow at San Diego Comedy Store, La Jolla, January 19th. In L.A., to my L.A. people, I'm going to be headlining, jam in the van comedy. All this stuff is on my Instagram, at Andre the Comedian. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Help me get to a 1,000 subscribers so I can monetize and meet partners with you too, baby. This is the Dre Day Podcast, baby. I hope you guys had a really, really good time. Thank you.